السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the special embryology lectures, I'm going to cover in this presentation the development of the thyroid and the parathyroid glands. I'm Dr. Dania Saleh, Professor and Head of Anatomy Department at Mansoura University, Egypt. The objectives of my presentation will be First, I'm going to talk about the development of the thyroid gland then the development of the parathyroid glands and finally their anomalies. To start first with the anatomy of the thyroid gland, it is an H-shaped endocrine gland that's formed of both left and right loops that are connected together by an isthmus. It lies on both sides of the inferior part of the larynx and the upper part of the trachea. The pyramidal loop, sometimes we can see it, uh, arises from the isthmus and sometimes we find a fibrous or a muscular band, it's called levator glanduli thyroidi, that connects the pyramidal loop to the hyoid bone. If we look at the thyroid gland from the back, it has a rounded posterior border that is related to the superior and the inferior parathyroid glands and also along the posterior border we can see the anastomosis between the arterial supply of the gland which are the superior and the inferior thyroid arteries. Regarding the thyroid gland development if we look at this uh, embryo from the side, this is a sagittal section in the embryo and this is the neural tube, this is the developing foregut and this is the developing uh, pharynx and this is the heart area here. So the development of the thyroid gland, it develops from a median endodermal thickening that's found on the floor of the pharynx at the junction between the anterior two-thirds and the posterior one-third of the tongue where you can find the foramen cecum. Then this endodermal thickening migrate downward and uh, will form the thyroid gland which will be located at the lower part of the neck. In this picture you can see a sagittal section here. This is the oral cavity, this is the tongue, this is the anterior two-thirds and here is the posterior one-third, this is the location of the foramen cecum and we can see the um, initial position of the endodermal thickening that will form the thyroid gland that will migrate downward till its final destination. So this endodermal thickening forms a pi-looped diverticulum that will descend anterior to the hyoid bone and anterior to the larynx and this diverticulum will be forming two loops connected by the isthmus and the isthmus lies opposite to the second, third and fourth tracheal rings. The duct that will connect the thyroid gland to its original location at the foramen cecum is called the thyroglossal duct. This duct should eventually degenerate. The fate of the thyroglossal duct will be as follows. Its proximal part will form the foramen cecum. Its distal part will form the levator glanduli thyroidi which is a fibromuscular band, like I said, connecting the pyramidal loop to the hyoid bone, and its middle part uh, will degenerate. For the different composition of the thyroid gland, you know that it is formed of uh, follicles and uh, parafollicular cells. The thyroid follicles are derived from the thyroid diverticulum, or the endodermal thickening at the floor of the pharynx and the parafollicular cells are derived from the ultimobranchial body from the fifth pharyngeal pouch. 
while the parathyroid glands both the superior and the inferior the inferior ones develop from the endodermal lining of the third dorsal pharyngeal pouch while the superior ones are derived from the fourth pharyngeal pouch and then the parathyroid gland will migrate downward till their final destination For the anomalies of the thyroid and the parathyroid glands, we could have ectopic thyroid, and this occurs due to incomplete descent of the thyroid gland. In this anomaly, the thyroid tissue can be found along the pathway of its descent. Sometimes it migrates more downward and in this case we call it retrosternal thyroid or we can have anomalies related to uh, the obliteration of the thyroglossal duct and we end up with what's called thyroglossal cysts in this case the remnants of the thyroglossal duct will form um, cysts from the thyroid tissue can be found in the midline anterior to the hyoid bone and anterior to the larynx. And finally, because the parathyroid glands migrate from their original location, we can end up with ectopic parathyroid glands. Uh, this is the end of my presentation about the development of the thyroid and the parathyroid glands. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share.